Hi, it's Congresswoman Jan Schakowsky back with my plans and pans. Um, I hope you had a chance to see part of the confirmation hearing of Katanji Brown Jackson, our uh, nominee for the United States Supreme Court. She is and was extraordinary. Um, and uh, it was wonderful to see her husband and her daughter just, just beaming. There were some wonderful moments. Um, and um, Cory Booker had one of those moments when um, he, in a, really in an elegant response to some of the attacks from the Republicans, did a couple of things. One, he read from a poem of Langston Hughes. He, he quoted, Oh, let America be America again, the land that never has been yet, and yet must be the land where every man is free. And then he went on to say, I'm not letting no bot, nobody in the Senate um, steal my joy. He said, don't worry, my sister, don't worry. God has, um, has you, God has got you, he put it. Um, how, how do I know that? Because you are here and I know what it takes for you to sit in that chair. And I think um, many people, particularly black women across the country, knew exactly what he was talking about. And then we heard uh, Lindsey Graham and Ted Cruz and uh, Marsha Blackburn talking uh, uh, about things like critical race theory and about child pornography and uh, was she for it? Um, and, and Marsha Blackburn saying to her, can you define the word woman? You know what she meant. She was going after transgenders, tra transgender people, but you know, throughout it all, she held her incredible dignity, displayed her knowledge of the law, and um, kept her kept her cool. And so it was uh, it, it was really um, I think fantastic, long haul, so many days, and and I think her being on the Supreme Court will be one of the best that we can celebrate in the United States of America. Well, then, of course, there was a lot of news um, on Ukraine. Um, for the one-month anniversary of this attack, unprecedented and unwarranted attack on, uh, on Ukraine, President Biden was in Brussels uh, to meet with uh, our NATO allies and leaders, the G7 and the EU. Um, and he announced a number of new things that we're going to uh, that, that we're going to be doing, um, and certainly was encouraging all of our allies to do more in terms of military and humanitarian support, which we are continuing to do, not only just by the millions, but another billion for uh, for for uh, assistance. Um, in ad addition, we know that we're going to welcome to the United States. Um, 100,000 refugees from, from Ukraine. I know that our mayor in Chicago, Lori Lightfoot, uh, spoke with Poland's President Duda, um, speaking about how we're gonna take some of the refugees that have flooded into, into Poland, into the, uh, in the, into the United States, and I look forward to be a part of those who will greet them. In addition, the president announced that there would be 400 more sanctions on Duma members, that's their, their parliament, on um, elites in Russia, and also defense contractors. Well, there's going to be a big rally and march uh, on Sunday, this Sunday, tomorrow. I'm uh, gonna be going there. Um, uh, headed by the leaders of the Ukrainian community and also the, in, the Council General um, invited me, the Council General from Ukraine to uh, the United States invited me to, to be there. 
you know, I uh, have a real connection to uh, Ukraine. My grandparents were uh, from there and came to first to Canada where my mother was born and then shortly after to Chicago. Um, and uh, like uh, President Zelensky, they were Jewish. And uh, so I have uh, Ukraine in my blood and I'm going to be happy to stand with the, with the people. It's, um, you know, unseasonably cold right now, but uh, I think it'll uh, warm our hearts, all of us, to stand together. Uh, I wanted to also tell you about community funding projects. You know, we used to, years ago, call it earmarks, that uh, members of Congress were able to make requests for funding for our districts. That was eliminated for a number of years and then came back with, um, for the first time with the um, omnibus appropriations bill that we just passed. And I was um, very fortunate that I was able to bring $3.4 million to the 9th Congressional District for 10 different projects. Um, all different kinds of projects for not-for-profit organizations and for municipalities. Um, I was able to get some infrastructure help for the village of Arlington Heights. A number of schools, both in Chicago and in the suburbs throughout the districts, have been helped for various uh, projects, uh, mostly high schools. Um, and then also was able to give some money to the Rohingya Cultural Center. Those are people who came from Myanmar and the president just this last week declared that what happened in Myanmar to the Rohingya people was a genocide. Naming that was very, very important. Not-for-profit organizations and municipalities that are interested in community funding projects um, should definitely contact my office so that we can uh, consider your great ideas. Also wanted to tell you about artistic discovery. Those of you who've been following me for a while know that there is an annual competition um, that each member of Congress can, if they choose, conduct for high school artists. That is, students who want to submit a work of art one um, winner is, uh, is chosen. Actually, we have a couple of other prizes, but the top winner gets to go to Washington, D.C. That work of art will be um, hung up uh, in the Capitol building for a year that people can, can see. Actually, it's the tunnel uh, be, between one of the office buildings and the Capitol, a beautiful exposition. Um, of the uh, of the art that is there, um, and that winner is invited to come to Washington with uh, one adult um, to be with the other winners and to receive um, a honor. So, um, but but every single one of the pieces of art art that can be hung on a wall um, will be displayed. Um, in the past, we've had it at uh, a library, so we haven't um, figured out exactly where yet. And then I have judges. These are people who really know the art that go through these various works and, uh, and rank them. Um, and every single contrib contributor and contribution will be recognized, and we have a certificate for each one of them. So it's really a, uh, a nice uh, event when we get all the, uh, the, uh, the contributions. So the point is that individual students can send them to us directly, or our teachers can make sure that they contact their students and get that piece of art to our office. So we're starting to collect them now and I hope we'll, we'll see that. It really is one of the most rewarding things I do to uh, be able to see the work of high school students within the 9th Congressional District and the wonderful work that they do. 
Also, uh, I wanted to um, tell you that there's good news on unemployment. The word came out last week that we are now at the lowest level of unemployment in 53 years. The unemployment rate um, is 3.8% and the Biden administration has created 7.4 million jobs. So, you know, there are there is definitely some very good news in the in the economy. Of course, it's all not all good news for all of you. I know that many people are concerned about the rising cost of prices, but I want to say that there is considerable amount of price gouging going on. Um, you know, during uh, World War II, there was a, um, a law that prevented price gouging, and um, we are seeing that now. So we are um, understanding that, and I think that there needs to be some action taken. We've seen not only the uh, oil companies who are making ha money hand over fist, but we have seen these increases in pharmaceutical costs. The pharmaceutical industry, one of the most profitable ever in the world, um, has just in 2022 raised their prices on hundreds and hundreds of drugs. Um, and so uh, Congress needs to act to um, stop the unfair higher charges, you know, and yes, that's part of inflation. That's what is part of the cause. So in addition to the good news on, uh, uh, on employment, we need to do something about the price gouging. As you know, unfortunately, abortion rights are uh, under attack at the uh, courts, at the Supreme Court on the federal level. Um, but it's also true that some states are taking very harmful action. Know that um, Arizona, for example, passed a 15 week uh, ab abortion ban um, the, um, the Idaho governor, interestingly, um, called the six-week ban. Um, he said it was unwise, and then he went ahead and signed it. Oklahoma's uh, House passed a, uh, it, 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 the House of, its, of Representatives, it's going to the Senate now, passed a near total ban on uh, abortion rights. But fortunately here in Illinois, which has become a real haven under the leadership of the Democrats in the House and Senate and Governor Pritzker, um, we have access to abortion and in fact um, have been um, seeing uh, women from states around our borders and even beyond coming to the state of Illinois to get what is their constitutional right. And, uh, and finally, let me tell you a little bit about COVID. Uh, uh, Illinois saw around 1,700 uh, new cases last uh, Thursday and 15 deaths, which actually is the lowest rate of hospitalization um, since last, Janu last July. So we're, uh, we're definitely, uh, definitely making progress. That's good news. The high profile um, COVID cases include Hillary Clinton um, and White House Press, Press Secretary Jen Psaki. Um, I certainly send my best wishes for their recovery and good health. And I wanna wish you um, good health and uh, hope that you enjoy the rest of your weekend. I'll see you next week. Thank you for watching my video. Make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel and follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook, where my handle is at Jan Schakowsky.